ahead and get to our guest, please. Who is the man that would risk his neck for his brother, man? Shit. I have got to work on that Jeff Sessions. Um, that was pretty uh, good. I don't know. That was I, no, real good. I don't know. I, that was that was weak. But you had the anyway. high pitched voice. I know you, you had got the draw. It was uh, really good. You know, I think I did a better job than they did on Saturday Night Live this weekend because they had the same girl who does Hillary Rodham Clinton. They slicked her hair back and put a suit on her that looked too big and had her act like she was Jeff Sessions. I'm going to admit. Uh, in front of the Mark Cox listening audience, and I'm in bed before Saturday Night Live comes on. Okay, so. well that's all right. I don't okay. watch it anyway. Okay. Right? I, I don't. I don't watch it. I'm just saying. But I'd admit that. To the yeah, that's good. That's good. So, so um, <laughs> you let's talk for a moment about this Jeff. Did you watch any of the Jeff Session stuff? I was this morning? watching it this morning. I'm riveted by stuff like that. Yeah, but I, I I can understand that. I am too. Um, I thought Jim Jordan did a great job questioning. Jeff Sessions on what's it going to take to get to a special counsel. And he kind of laid out some of the facts. Listen to some of this he did. We know that we know that former FBI Director James Comey misled the American people in the summer of 2016 when he called the Clinton investigation a matter. It's obviously an investigation. We know FBI Director Comey was drafting an exoneration letter before the investigation was complete. We know Loretta Lynch, one day before the Benghazi report came out, five days before Secretary Clinton was scheduled to be interviewed by the FBI, met with former President Bill Clinton on a tarmac in Phoenix. Um, We know after that meeting, when she was corresponding with public relations people at the Justice Department, she was using the name Elizabeth Carlisle. You know, as I've said before, it seems to me if you're just talking golf and grandkids, you can probably use your real name. We know that... Mr. Comey publicized the investigation, and we know he made the final decision on whether to prosecute or not. And then when he gets fired, he leaks a government document through a friend to the New York Times. And what was his goal? To create momentum for a special counsel. And of course, it can't just be any special counsel. It's got to be Bob Mueller, his best friend, his predecessor, his mentor. I thought Jim Jordan did a great job of laying out the facts just on Comey alone and the way he prosecuted that investigation he's not a prosecutor but you know what you know how i'm using the word how he how he as head of the fbi prosecuted the investigation into hillary clinton there's plenty of grounds to question his motives and his intentions with the email that got leaked that apparently he had changed the 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 way he worded it to whether you know it was gross or gross negligence or not or just you know careless mistake I agree with you. I agree with Congressman uh, Jeffords. Uh, Jordan. Jordan. Jordan, mm -hmm. In a perfect world, Bill and Hillary Clinton would be investigated. They would probably be in jail, but we're not in a perfect world. The Clintons have too much stuff on too many people. That is why they will never be uh, prosecuted. That's why they will never be held in front of the law. You remember when Bill Clinton was president of the United States and all of those missing folders— those folders from the FBI folders of all these people were missing for like five years, and then all of a sudden they found them in the in, in the White House. Mm-hmm. Those people have stuff, too much stuff on too many people on Democrat and the Republican side. So, so there's a lot of people that are protecting them because they don't want their little kingdoms, fiefdoms, their reputation. Let, let me tell you fall. how they're trying to intimidate Jeff Sessions. Today, Luis Gutierrez— <laughs> Um, spent a long time badgering Sessions over whether or not he was going to keep the promise that Donald Trump made when he was running for president, as as if that would be a bad thing. Uh, if Donald Trump said, I will instruct my attorney general to investigate, I don't know why you don't have the ability to instruct your attorney general to investigate. It's not like he's making things up that the Clintons did. There's plenty of grounds for an investigation. The Democrats want to make it seem outrageous that you would possibly start an investigation of your predecessor. But you said it was a remarkable and brilliant campaign. He said, quote, during the second debate, if I win, I'm going to instruct my attorney general, that would be you, because he chose you, to get a special prosecutor to look into your situation, referring to Hillary Clinton, because there's never been so many lies, so much deception, end quote. And when Hillary Clinton uh, responded, she said, because you'd be in jail. 
Are you going to fulfill that campaign promise I'm that going he to... made during the second debate? Because he did say he'd put her in jail. He said he asked the attorney general, you, to set a special project. That's what he said. It's a quote. I didn't make it up. What do you say? Are you going to keep that campaign promise? I'll fulfill my responsibilities. You're going to keep, are you going to keep the campaign promise? Is this yes or no? It's a promise that your boss, he hired you to fulfill. Are you going to fulfill? We will comply uh, with the law uh, with regard to special prosecutor appointments. So there you have it. And if, if, first of all, what Gutierrez is suggesting is that Donald Trump is going to send some jackbooted thugs to arrest Hillary Clinton and drag her off to jail without a trial. All he was suggesting was he would he would force an investigation because, in his opinion, as the person running against her, she had committed crimes. Yeah. I, I but Gutierrez is brilliant in his little snarky comments to Sessions. It's just how they operate. As I said before, I think if you took down the Clintons and you investigated them, I think it would create, and I think what a lot of the leaders are worried about, that it would show so much corruption on the Democrat and the Republican side of the aisle that it would create some type of crisis in the United States government so we can't investigate them. We just have to look over what they've done because we don't think the American people can handle all of the corruption that's within the government and exposing things that— we don't want to know. See, I just, I, I, I don't know why we would be afraid to do something like that. Because, because I don't be believe because be that Hillary Clinton Democrat. would have hesitated to try to charge Donald Trump with something if she had beaten him. Back up, you creep. Get away from me. I, I agree. I, I, that, I that, agree. That's what I think. That's what I think. Uh, real quick, uh, there are reports coming across the bottom of the screen on Fox News of a shooting uh, somewhere in Northern California, and it seemed to involve a school. Uh, Jason, what do you have on it? Yeah, at this point in time, we're looking at their local Fox affiliate, and they say that at least three people were killed and at least two children wounded in a shooting at a rural Northern California school this morning. Uh, the school, Rancho Tahama Elementary School, this all happened around 8 a.m. local time, and there were multiple victims. The gunman looks like he, was re- he or she was reportedly shot by police, uh, but there were multiple shots fired, multiple victims uh, a deputy has in, informed that the uh, that the uh, shooter is now down and, and deceased. Is it a domestic? Does it sound like? It might be. Uh, it doesn't look like it's uh, I, at this point it'd be speculation, but it doesn't look like it would be terrorist related by any means. All right. Uh, but we'll keep you up to date on that as All we right. find some more. Jason, thank you. Probably a good time for me to mention that uh, you know those folks that run toward the gunfire. Uh, this is our our first responder Thanksgiving all of the month of November recognizing the police officers and the firefighters and the EMS personnel who come when you call. And today, our spotlight is on the Chesterfield Police Department. We want to thank them for their good works. Go to our website at 971talk.com, and right on the right side of the screen, you'll see you can click on our our first responder Thanksgiving. It's got more on today's spotlight department, the Chesterfield Police Department. Uh, We thank them for all they do out there and keeping us safe while we're down there shopping and visiting Chesterfield. Also, a link to the responder rescue people who, who help out when responders are the ones who need help. They provide, they pay for bills and, and you know, heating and, and mortgages and stuff like that if they've been injured and can't work. It's just a great organization. Let me encourage you to go to their website and uh, donate if you can. Responder Rescue. It's right there on the website, 971talk.com. Good.